บอกกันยุ่งให้ไหนบอกว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่าว่า Down his family. They just finished harvesting the rice a few days ago. So we're just going to give him a hand to get it into bags. Do they like send it away for processing or what? Yes. Do they? Mm. You got to send it away. Make it dry after harvesting. They will sell some and keep some for eating a whole year. Yeah. Was it a good harvest this year? Yeah. Was it? Didn't you say it's a bit dry? Mm. Didn't you say it was? There wasn't as much rain. How is this year compared to other years? Is it good or not? Mm. ปีนี้กับปีอันที่แล้วอันไหนดีกว่ากันไหมแกมมันก็พอเหมือนกันแหละแต่ว่าปีนี้แรงกันบ่ almost the same but this year is a bit a bit worse because it's dry dry season yeah no not much rain How long does it need to be laid out like this to ripen? Three, three days. Yeah? Yes. The people have just had it on the side of the road, didn't they? Yeah. Don't think I should have too much trouble <laughs> with this. So this rice is like what your whole world revolves around here, isn't it? In the farm. Mm -hmm. Like everything's about the rice. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the religion. How much nakiam in a bag? More? Like that. Oh yeah, full. Mr. Luke, the drifter in Taiwan. So you need the family to uh, harvest the rice. Mm -hmm. You need the rice to feed the family. Mm. Yeah, that's about all it is, isn't it? How much do I get for each bag? Hmm? How much money do I get each bag? Uh, recently the price is 11 baht per kilo. 11 baht a kilo. Now how much do I get for bagging it? <laughs> for free meals. Oh really? Yeah. Working for my tucker. <laughs> 
Australia is not much different in Australia. Mm. the beach. Mm -hmm. It's a bit easier. Mm -hmm. This is a final cut. They're using the farm to carry everything in the farm. Another space here. How much does it say it's worth a kilo, Daniel? Hmm? How much is it worth a kilo? 11 baht. 11 baht. Let's so say this bag is going to be 20 kilos. Mm. 10 baht. 10 dollars. Mm. About 10 dollars Australian in a bag. Mm. Yeah. A lot of work in it. Ten dollars a bag, eh? Tung nang tak kilo na kiam. Tuman sibuli, tuman gip kecik kiam. One bag is about twenty-seven kilos. Okay. These guys are all got beautiful brown tan skin. <laughs> yes. And they're covered head to toe. <laughs> and I'm white as a ghost. And I'm <laughs> funny that why they I don't know why they get so much dressed up. It's not as a uh, as sun protection, but it's about protecting from the dust. Yeah? The dust from someone is everything you can it's caused a bit fishy. Oh, ah, yeah. yeah. I'm normally allergic to everything. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Well, when I was in America, I was um, turned up now harvesting the loosen. Mm. And I jumped on and started doing that. And within an hour, I was just like. <laughs> Laying down in the creek, my face is so swollen. Worst hay fever in my life. Yeah, how about this? No, that's fine. I have to get a drink of water soon. And um, isn't there? Wouldn't there be any rats and stuff come around at night and eat the grain? Mm, no. No. Even it's calm, they huh? can get as much as they can. Still plenty of, plenty for them. Oh yeah, still plenty for them. Mm. What do you think? You wanna be a farmer? No. Hmm? <laughs> Not less stress than <laughs> what I normally get to put up with. <laughs> okay. And I don't mind working hard. Mm. I love this time, I was for a while, when I was young. It doesn't pay so well, does it? Mm. But over here, you don't really need a lot of cash, do you? Mm. Here out here, the farm provides everything. Yeah. We'll have a look later on, but you know, these people are happier in general than anyone I've ever seen in Australia. Mm. They get everything they need and they don't have anything except the rice and the house, mm. roof over the heads. Mm. And they got their family, mm. big families, and you know they work hard and very, very lucky people. Really, there's a lot of incredibly rich, miserable people mm. in the Western world. And um, you know, if the stock market crashed tonight, mm. these guys wouldn't even bat an eyelid. They wouldn't even notice it. Mm. You'd have a uh, huge. Yeah, <laughs> Hello. 
Western people all over the place would lose everything, their house, their cars, <laughs> and they have no access to food where these guys wouldn't bother them. Hmm. Would they? Oh, Nakim's hard work, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> they all are. I think that's Nakim, isn't it? I think it's him, he's got a... Dingo. Yeah, it looks like a dingo. <laughs> Beauty Aussie import from Australia. What's wrong there? You okay? All right. Hey, come and have a look at this machine. Let's just start it. What else I'm wearing here? No, then look them. Let me just take a break. There we go. Walking. You wanna sit there? Let's have a look what he's doing. Mm. Where did you get these from? Bamboo. Oh. Yeah, this from Bamboo. Just got them out of the bush. Mm. 
นมาเนี่ยมาของแกมาด้วยเห็นขับขับน้องเด้อน้องเด้อที่ไปมันไปได้นี่นี่บอกแล้วดึงเฮ้ยเราบังยิงเลยบอกเราเป็นเราบังมันมอไทยไม่ได้อืมอ่าทำคุณสอนอือฮึไทยฟังเหตุอือฮอืมโอเคจะกันแล้วคุณสอดเหรอใช่ที่อยู่เอชเอ็มมาเราคุยเสียงไม่สูงมาเก็บสิบเบสกิลอิสโลโคสกิลเฮ้ยสันนิบาลิงทอนว่าขนาดจะบลัดีฟาร์มส์ในออสเตรเลียจะสตาร์ทให้มันบาลิงทอนทุกที่เลยมาดูสิน่ะเฮ้ยนะ That's not a good tie, but that's the job, eh? Mm. Quite amazing. Good job. Bandai dia, bandai dia. Kita buat air ทำไมเราก่อนตัวนี้รถไทยไปห้ามเพื่อนตะบัวขึ้นกันไหมวิญญาณกันไหมหรือวะโอ้กุ้งขาท่านมาวันนี้นะกุ้งขามาขอขึ้นเล่าไหมเ
Nhiều tôm mắc rồi đấy 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 Nhiều tôm mắc rồi
Not the young built this house, didn't you? Uh, yeah, Eric, yeah, yeah. Quite close. Last time oh, I was here. Oh, oh, oh. Not him was, this is a still frame. Oh, oh. All still frame. Yeah. And yeah, Not here basically does a bit of building work on the, during the week, and not on harvesting. Get some cash and this is the house he made. <laughs> Alright, looks good, mate. <laughs> Beautiful. What about the taxi? Mm. Hello, hello. Sorry, Carl. Hello, Carl. Beautiful, you bastard. Look at the door. It's good. <laughs> yeah, look at this wall. This is where the TV's going. Look. Stone, is it? Ah. Yeah. Tiles. Stone tiles. No wood, no wood. <laughs> no wood. No wood. <laughs> Classic Thai style. Ah, yeah. Oh. I love the tiles. To me. Yeah. Air conditioner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some nice windows. So this is all concrete, brick. I think brick. And oh well. Wow. Very nice. Look at this. Got plastic over the lights so they don't get paint on them. Fire. Like the song, 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 money. I thought, I thought, I thought, I got it. Ah, yeah. Then I said, you don't move on, right? I'm not quite half. Hmm, half. I'm not sure if it's. So, I can't get to it. I think that should still be in there. So I reckon it's like a brick that's been rendered, but um, but this looks like it's uh, tilt up almost. Yeah, very nice. Oh look, you got some lights out here, dude. Ah, oh, very good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, a bit, yeah. bit yeah. tacky. Yeah. Mm. Tin. Tin. <laughs> Pretty thin. And this is um, concrete tiles. Ah. Beautiful. Very good. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Very proud of the house. This is the builder. Mm. I like the um, uh, orange. Good. Orange. Orange. Less orange. Orange. This is red. Red. Yes. Uh, orange. Orange. <laughs> so. Mmm. Look at that. There's um. Drain, cleaning. Yeah. And this is uh, Darren's auntie's house. And this is the house that Darren grew up in. <laughs> right there. So that's all her family's. My, my bad cow. Oh yeah. Wood, wood. Timber. Bad cow. And tin. I need tin. New wood. Hmm. Wood. Yes. Oh, welded. And Nakia working here. Ah. Nakia. <laughs> There's the old style. Oh. So this is a little village. Everybody basically 
You know, lives. They all used to live out in the farms, in the little shacks. We'll show you later on. But as they got a bit of money, they've built houses, little houses, like all these, in the village, so they can live in the village. And they just live out on the farms. You know, uh, when the harvest is on or the planting. A little bub in there. Yeah. I mean. เอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อ
Yeah, so go for a bit of a jog. And uh, show you what it's like in the morning of uh, northeast Thailand. No! Sit down. Oh, a few dogs around. This is my normal little running track. And, uh, I don't know, probably two and a half k's along here. There's a pack of dogs on the end of this road. I just can't get past. They got me bailed up. They will not let me pass, so we'll see. Beautiful place. It's a big irrigation dam. Down is Arnie's place. Red roof. Yeah. Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different lifestyle over here. But it's not something we can really do from in the west but we can certainly learn from as they can learn from us you know it seems a shame in the west that families are scattered you know my family is right up the east coast from Cairns to Blaney and it's just what we do you know move around for a better place but sacrifice a lot when you do that and here they're all just pretty much stay at the farm and then they've got a big family all around them and that's what they need to survive here you know you can't survive here just on your own they all look after each other the farm takes care of them and they take care of the farm and that's how it works over top of that big ridge there's a, a massive dam so they put a dam in and wanted to uh, irrigate this enormous valley here and uh, Darren his grandfather owned a lot of land so he donated the land that the uh, that's nothing space for now he's got a bit of work to do we might go to say good day on the way back Yes, Darren's grandfather donated some land that they had the uh, the hydroelectric scheme on, like the power plant, and, uh, and then uh, the king, when they opened it, the king of Thailand flew up in a chopper and opened it, and pretty big deal for India. So. That's one other thing is all down his family are guaranteed jobs at the power plant which of course brings in a bit of extra cash and makes life a little easier. So that's pretty cool. So really on the in the countryside here this is a little dirt track perfect for running on. I love running bare feet. 
you know, because when you're running bare feet, well, you got to be a lot more careful. You got to, you got to literally watch where you put each foot, each footstep. If you're on with shoes, you know, you start running a bit blind. You know, you don't care. You just run over anything. But running barefoot, you've really got to watch where you put every step. If you step on a big stone, you can bruise your heel and oh my god it's very painful. Once you bruise your heel, it's so painful. But you gotta be careful. And the other thing is you can feel the earth like under your feet. You, know, you can really feel the earth and feel the dust and the dirt, the sand, the gravel. You can really connect to the earth in a way that you can't if you got shoes on. And I think people miss that. That's how we've been that's how we've been developed. But whatever, thousands of years, hundreds of thousands of years, depending on what you believe. But we've certainly evolved as runners. And you know, like there's something like 26 bones in your foot. And they're all made, they're designed to run barefoot. And uh, if you run with shoes, you lose all that. You lose that contact with the earth. You lose that contact between your body and the earth. And I think that's a shame. And you sort of need, it's very hard to run on tar. But if you get a chance, find a dead track and go for a jog. Come on, mate. I'm gonna scare the crap out of this guy. You watch. I won't mean to. Swatty cup. Swatty cup. Me? Hello. I think he said, "You hey guys are crazy Aussie." I love the sound your feet makes, also with the earth. natural, almost therapeutic sound. And also, you got to run very light. And the best way, the proper way to run, is for the ball of your foot to land slightly in front of the heel. Right, so, and if you look down through your body, <coughs> Look down for your body, your shoulders, your hips, your feet. Should be a straight line. So you should be running upright, and the balls of your feet should be touching the ground underneath your hips, not out in front, and not with your heels. You cannot run heel first, bare feet. You got to run the ball of your foot makes contact slightly before the heel and I think you know the shoe company sort of put out this running theory that you've got to run heel first and the only way you can do that is by the big thick soled shoes 
but that's not how we developed running. Look at these little little huts. I love these little huts. It's like base camp for when you're working. What I love also about the families here in Thailand on the farms is like last night we have a meal where 40 people turn up and it's like an all day affair and they all come around about smoko and they bring a chicken, they bring a cow's head, they all bring something. Fields. This hasn't been harvested yet. Here's the dogs up here. You know, they bring whatever they can, some vegetables, and then they'll proceed to spend all day sitting around together, chopping up. I mean, they do not waste. They're like the Aborigines or, you know, people like that. They eat every single thing even uh, one time they bought it the skin of a cow like a hairy old cow skin and they just sat there cut it up and they burn all the hair off and then they chopped it up fine and put it into a dish it's like no different to pork crackle I suppose anyway they eat everything but they all sit around, I've seen them there. <coughs> you know, eight, ten blokes. All sitting around the little table. Chopping up, mincing, dicing, cutting. All day. And here comes somebody. Let's see. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's all right. Sorry. It's all right. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, come here. Hey. Cup. Hey. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Top green cup. That's not the pack. That's only the sentry. Anyway, they're sitting around this table, <coughs> chopped this uh, meat up all day, and the women are working together as well. And, uh, you know, I can't help but think that that sort of situation is very rare in the Western world. But, oh my God, they, I mean, everything they provide for the for dinner that night everything except the beer has come from their farm so you know there's there's a dam with every rice farm stock full of fish it's like a carp there's geese there's ducks there's pigs there's rice and coconuts and vegetables so They've literally got everything they need. Look at that. Such a changing landscape because when they plant it, it's all water. And then it's this beautiful fluorescent green. Oh, I think this is where the dogs are. Yep. 
Yeah. That's where the dogs are here. They must be out in the bush. I'll turn around while I can. Once one comes, they all come. So yeah, it's just a refreshing and beautiful family environment here. And uh, you know, you got no money, but it really puts into perspective. You know what do you actually need money for? Let's have a look. <coughs> the lifeblood of Asia. Now, the Western world has wheat, which is almost the same thing. And the Western world has wheat, which is almost the same thing. Look at that ready to harvest and that's what you see lying on the, on the blue tarps you know that's it that's what it's all about and they literally almost worship the rice I mean they're Buddhist but uh, they literally almost worship this rice because that's what feeds and sustains them. And again, the, the family looks after the farm and the farm looks after the family. It gives them everything they need. But uh, a lot of the young girls, you know, the, the modern families here, you know, they are trying to get a better life for their kids. So a lot of them, of course, you know, you see it in, all over Asia going to universities and trying to get an education because out here you know you're just literally working all day every day there's a lot of them just don't have time to go to school after like primary school so you just don't get to go to high school and every parent's trying to get a better life for their kids so a lot of the kids end up in the cities going to school or university and that's what Darren he did and her sister so her dad, to enable them to get the money to send these two girls to school, he had to work abroad for about 10 years. So he used to work on construction, just labouring in Saudi Arabia, China, Philippines, all over the place. He'd go away for two years at a time, send the money back, come home for three months, and go off again and that enabled him to send his girls to school and then when Darren finished university she got a just a secretary job at the airport handling cargo and that was getting her about 300 bucks a week and uh, that enabled her to support the whole family so from that wage, she then took over the mortgage on the small house they got, a very small house on the outskirts of Bangkok, paid the, paid the lease on the car, which unfortunately got stolen, so they still got to pay it, and also pays for her sister to go through university. So one little wage pays for everything. Her mum and dad both work full time, but on you know mum's street food vendor. She gets up four o'clock in the morning and pretty much works all day. And her dad works as a security guard. So when I was first enough, he just finished two 24-hour shifts as a security guard. But, you know, labouring jobs in the city is very low wages, long hours, it's a tough life. So they come out here as much as they can. But I think as soon as Darren and his sisters finish uni, they're going to probably come back here. This little hut.
I love these huts. I really want to build one like that. It's also the outdoor living here. I just love the old style. I love the old Australian farm sheds. And I love these little huts that the Thai rice farmers live in. Anyway, I'm not running that fast today because if I do, I won't be able to talk really. But so let's see if we can have a look at Nokiam's farm. Yeah, he's a cool dude. He's a wild looking man, Nakim. He's the one I was with on the, the old tractor truck the other day. But uh, I admire him, you know, because he's, he's a very nice man. He works hard. He works very hard. These people start at like five o'clock every morning. And, uh, and then night time is he doesn't stop, you know, preparing food, getting, looking after everybody, you know. He's like, say, the strongest of the family. And he really provides for them, you know, a whole lot of them. His strength. You know, the other thing I really noticed here too, when we're bagging up, not just that, but we're bagging up the wheat yesterday. But, yeah. In a village, it's about, it's really about survival. If you're too lazy to go and harvest your wheat, your rice, you don't eat. So it's literally about survival. And, you know, the men are stronger. They do the big heavy lifting. The women work very hard doing all that they do. But you know what? They work as a total team. They work together, they're partners in life. And if you're married, that's how it should be. And uh, you know, it doesn't matter about who earns more money. A lot of talk about the wage gap, which is total crap. It's just used by the identity, it's called identity politics, I'm trying to divide us. And it's a evil, Marxist doctrine straight out of you know communism anyway I'm trying to make a big deal out of it now of course watch Jordan Peterson he'll tell you all about it but yeah men earn more mostly it's because they are working a lot longer hours when you look at you know the wage gap they don't take into account any other factors besides the cash it's brought in. That's total nonsense. And like I've got a hundred staff. I employ a lot of people. I've done for 20 years. And if I could pay women less, I would employ a lot more women. I mean, it's totally ridiculous. But you hear it all the time in the mainstream media. It's absolute shit. And of course, we pay our workers based on the jobs they do. Irrelevant of if they're a male or female. You know, totally irrelevant. It's what job are you doing? Uh, what pay rate are you doing? Are you earning for that job? You know, we started a, a guy on canvas the other day, first time. You know what I find really interesting, All right? I got Dot, I got 12 guys working in Dot. You know? And if you looked at their average pay rate, yeah, it is actually a little bit higher than the 15 women working in canvas. Right? But if any of the women in canvas wanted to go down, you know, in 35, 40 degree heat and weld chassis all day, cut steel, get covered in sparks, I mean, it's a tough job. I've never had a single woman ask for a job in the dot. On the flip side, I've never 
had one guy end up before, in canvas, one guy. I never get anybody come to me wanting to sew, blokes. So, <coughs> you know, the dot job is harder and to get people to do that job and the skills they need a baller make. I mean, we need skills, we need skilled tradesmen and the pay rate is slightly above that reflects that so there's a reason for it in canvas if you're a home mum and you've used a sewing machine before within a week I can have you sewing bags I don't need you to have you know six seven eight years experience as a boiler maker before you can come on and fabricate a trailer or custom parts but if any girl wanted to work for dot or any dot guy wanted to work for canvas they're quite welcome but why are there all girls in canvas and all blokes in dot it's been that way for seven six seven years now we got quite a few women girls working in kitchens and drawers which is awesome but you know the media is trying to pit one against the other and use these sort of things to attack us and drive us apart and you can see it in America more people are getting very vicious the left but over here again it's all irrelevant people are partners they work together and they're all trying to survive they are partners and it's really nice to see that Jordan Peterson says this and I think we've forgotten that for a lot of history you know women and men have just worked together and then he stopped the last decade really so we're different we're physically different we're mentally different we're emotionally different we handle stress differently and each has their own advantages and disadvantages and when you combine that you get the perfect harmony that's what you need to understand it's about unison and working together all right let's go see Nakim hey there you go. Oh yeah, little jog. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, nothing's got a big job. Shame we've got a lot of the pups. They went here last time I was here. <laughs> Look at the pups. Beautiful. Alright, uh, have a quick look at your house. <laughs> Come on. I'll show you when where Nokia lives. Because this is where Darren used to live. Till she was 10. Oh, look at these rice. I wish I was here tonight, I could get my hands to bag it up. Well, that rice is not finished either, they've still got a process so There's little processing plants all over the place and you'd take a bag of rice there which is say enough for a month and you would, uh, they would de-husk it and you know, make it look like rice. So, this is what you call a farm shack. Very typical, big water tanks. Water collects in the big drums. We've got a little shack. And they love their sort of tiled area, so they'll have one little space. A space in Nakim's bedroom. Nice clean tile. Picture of the Queen and King. And the bed's put away up there in the morning. And this is now a chook shed, but this is where Darren grew up. She lived out here until they could afford a house in town. 
and that was farm life. Look him. So he's got a wife and beautiful daughter and she just had a baby so beautiful little grandchild. He's a happy man.